Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. You need to stop overthinking your tooling. The primary purpose of tooling, in a nutshell, is to get the job done. So there's been many a times where I need just short-term tooling, whether it be a fixture or a jig that I'm going to weld to a welding table, and then I'm gonna use it to bend some sort of thing around or use it as a temporary form to do additional work to it. And then once it's done, I'm cutting it loose and pitching it into the scrap pile. I see a lot of people looking at their tooling and thinking that, you know, hey, this is good enough, or hey, what alloy is that? Hey, this is good for that, or that alloy is bad for that. Stop overthinking your tooling. Your tooling is meant to get the job done. And a lot of times, mild steel will suffice for a lot of temporary tools. But if you need to make a 10, if you need to make 10,000 of something and you're making them in an open die, by all means, use a suitable quality steel to make that out of. So this way you can save your, so you can save on having to keep reproducing that piece you know, reproducing that die a zillion times. It does matter what type of tool steels you use for your tooling, but that is secondary in nature to the actual tool itself. Does it do the job? Is it fit for work? How do you know whether it's fit to use in your shop? Is the tool safe? That's number one. The second thing, how to figure out whether it's suited for the work, does the produced tool that you just made no matter whether it was out of mild steel, it was out of 1075, it was out of 4140, it was out of H13, S7, doesn't matter. Does it produce the desired result in the work that you're after? Third and final consideration is how many times am I going to use this tool in the frequency in which that it's going to be staying in hot material because that will matter a lot. So the cycle rate of tooling matters a lot. You can do a real quick cost to benefit analysis for yourself in the way that you make that cost benefit analysis is those three things. So in my shop there are multiple types of tools, there's multiple types of steels that I'm working with. I'm the only person that actually knows what those are. If you are in a school environment where you're teaching other people and you're like running a blacksmithing school, it's highly imperative that everyone's on the same page. So maybe in that case, you would like to make all your tools, all your struck tools out of 4140, and then maybe all your hammers out of 1045. That way, if something happens, there's a chip, there's a nick, that you know you need to reforge something you know what type of material it is it's not some random junkyard material and you know the proper heat treatment for that particular steel and it's something that you can do in house and you feel comfortable doing those are all important considerations when you're thinking about tooling but i would argue for the most part if you are a beginner out there or you're a hobbyist those considerations should be probably further from your mind consideration that should be the largest on the table and principally amongst them is whether it's safe and is it fit to service? Is it fit to do the purpose that you're intending it to do? If it is, then it's a good tool. Now it could be third world ugly. It could be the most ugliest tool that you've ever produced in your life and maybe you don't know no better and they're the most jankiest looking pair of tongs that you've ever forged. Do they hold the stock you are trying to hold? If they do, then they're fit for purpose. Are they safe? That means they're not, you know, gonna let something fly out of your hands. If those two questions are answered as yes, then they're fit for purpose. Who cares what material they're made out of or how ugly they are? They are just intended to suit the purpose. Now there are professional blacksmiths out there, specifically professional tool makers. They have got to take and maintain the most highest quality standards in their work for their tooling because they are producing something that is going into your hands. So they need to make sure that those boxes are check marked off. Safety is primary and chief. It's fit for the purpose. It's actually going to work what they're selling you. It, it's going to, and that the cycle rate is going to fit the type of work that it's intended to. And it doesn't matter whether they were $20 pairs, they were $60 pairs or $100 pairs, those pair of tongs, you could carry a good set of pair of tongs with you for your entire smithing career. Where this all stems from is again, I see a lot of people getting caught up in the little minutia details about tooling and it hinders them from getting their projects or their work done because the common thing I get is, well, I don't have 4140 on hand. Well, who cares? Make it out of mild steel. 
you won't get as long a service life out of it. But if it does the same thing, if it's a fuller, it's a fuller. I've got guillotine tools. I have guillotine tools that I sell through my website at blacksmithingblanks.com and they come with mild steel die stock and some people are like Ugh, mild steel die stock that's that's terrible you know it's mild steel but if you bring hot material to cold dies the deformation is going to happen on the hot material not the cold dies I have some dies that have been in my shop for 10 years now these have been around this my own personal guillotine tool these are mild steel dies and I have used them day in, day out, and you know, almost, almost daily for the last decade, and they are still holding up well. Yes, the top's all mushroomed off, and I need to grind that up nice and clean, but again, this die has been around in my shop, and it's just mild steel. It's a big chunk of mass here. It's been in my shop for 10 years, in use in a professional blacksmith shop. So that means it's gonna get a lot more use than say the home hobbyist. The last consideration about tooling, and I'll put this last out there than all, we are not all made of money, right? Uh, I know it may appear that you know Roy's a real fancy rich YouTuber, uh, that's not the case. There is, we are not all made of money. And so therefore, price is a consideration. You may have a very low budget and you can't afford going out and buying H13 tooling that's all properly and professionally heat treated at a professional guy's shop. And that's okay. Maybe you can get by with, you know, a more peasant class steel, right? Oh, that's poor, sad old 1045, the good old standby, right? Oh well, maybe you can't handle, maybe you can't afford Atlantic 33. That's fine, it's a specialty steel. It's interesting, it's weird, it's a different alloy of stuff. But you can get the same results and have sometimes maybe even better results with 1045, 1075, 1095, and it's more commonly available and it's about half the cost. So, you know, that is okay. You don't have to go along with the next bougiest whatever the thing is that everyone's promoting out there that oh h13 is the best or s7 is the best or or you know this particular steel is the best or 4140 there's some tried and true ones out there that are just as common as mild steel is and maybe you should go down those routes first and learn how to heat treat simple carbon steels so that's hopefully just a bit of encouragement to you all out there. Again, for you beginners uh, and some of you old dogs alike, is you can take and do a lot of great work with really ugly and janky tooling. If you want to be a professional tool maker, if you want to take pride in your tools, by all means, take the time to forge really nice tools, whether they be hammers, tongs, punches, chisels, hot cut hardies, things like that. By all means, take pride in your work, do the best quality that you can, even in your own tools, so you can get a lot of life and enjoyment and service out of those tools. But if you got a hardy stem that's a little off center, oh well, no one's going to care, your anvil's not going to care. So that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and God bless each and every last one of you, and we will catch you on the next one.